to bring you the story of Joseph Epu Elim, who is the member, county assembly member there. Elim put a spirited fight in the 2017 elections, despite being visually impaired, to clinch the seat, beating four other competitors. Elim lost his eyesight in 1988, but has overcome insurmountable odds to become a respected leader in the community. Our Elvis Kuske reports from the county of Turkana. In 2017, the 35-year-old went against the grain, despite his disability in a bid to change the lives of Letea residents through meaningful development. He was an independent candidate in the polls and beat candidates from major political parties, ODM and Jubilee Party, to win the seat. So many opponents told the people, they weren't even to the extent of uh, quoting the Bible that it is written in the holy book of the Bible that a person with disability should not lead the full-bodied people, that it is a curse to have a person with disability be elected. But the, my message to the people was that since 1963 up to 2017, I have been electing people who are fully able-bodied, full-sighted, with all five senses. But these full-sighted people have failed to provide them with the basic requirements of life. Elim lost his eyesight in 1988 when he was in standard three following a bout of missiles. After I lost my eyesight, I was compelled to stay home for a period of three years without accessing any education. Until 1990, when I came, I, I came to Kaukuma, and I became one of the street boys in Kakuma town. Despite his inability to see his people, the father of five looks forward to provide alternate leadership. Niakikisha umepata maji ya kutosha, niakikisha kama kuna mali hospitali baada ya jifikia, niakikisha hospitali imefika, isi ma naza resorte simifikishwa. And residents of Letea Ward have confidence in their member of county assembly. Tunaona kuna Mwangaza, ni mtu wa mwangaza katika uongozi wake. Ya kuna bidii sana. Ya kuna bidii sana. My objective ilikuwa at least by 2022 niwe tumepata nafasi 40 kwa county. Epu boasts of a master's degree in political science, degree from Kenyatta University which he attained through a scholarship. And for Epu, the sky is the limit. Elvis Kosgei, KT News, Turkana County. Former Funyula Member of Parliament Paul Otwoma, former Assistant Minister Kabando Wakabando, and Safaricom Boss Bob Kolimo are among the latest set of presidential appointees to chair and sit on boards of government parastatals and commissions. A Gazette notice dated December 21st but dates some of the appointments to December 14th, 2018. KTN's Mark Namaswa has the details. We wish you well and uh, top on the list of the mostly recognizable faces are former minister and ex Funula MP Paul Otuoma, who will now serve as the chairman of the privatization commission for three years from 19th December 2018. Former Mukuroini MP Kabando Akabando alongside Linda Haemba, Romana Yego, and Fatma Salim will be members of the board of the local authorities providing fund for a period of three years with effect from December 19, 2018. Safaricom chief Bob Colimo, KCB CEO Joshua Oigara, and entrepreneur Juliana Rotich have also been gazetted as members of the Kenya Vision 2030 delivery board for three years. Rallying star Carl Tundo has been appointed alongside Nicholas Hutchinson and Eunice Karanja as board members of the National Cereals and Produce Board, also for a period of three years. Still in the agriculture sector, 2017 Transoya Governor aspirant Martin Gomat and Zena Chala will now sit on the Kenya Animal Genetics Research Center Board for three years following the revocation of the appointments of Angela Koech and Dennis Okundi. Consumer Federation boss Stephen Mutoro has been appointed member to the Anti-Counterfeit Agency Board for three years. 
Other political beneficiaries of the appointments include former Nyatike MP Edik Omoni Anyanga, who will now be a board member of the Agricultural Finance Corporation, and former Allego legislator Edwin Yinda, who now takes over as chairman of the board of the Postal Corporation of Kenya. Mark Namaswa, KTN News. ANC Party Secretary General Godfrey Osotsi and ANC members together with other ODM party members are calling on Deputy President William Ruto to stop undermining the handshake that has led to calls for a referendum which he is opposing. Let's listen to what they had to say. We will be taking that story later but let's now move on to Nyeri, where the Kenya National Union of Teachers officials drawn from central Kenya region has issued an ultimatum to union's national leadership over what they termed as a deliberate attempt to sideline the region as far as critical decisions are concerned. The leaders of the teachers union have poked holes on elections that were recently conducted to fill vacant positions, alleging that the exercise would, was marred with malpractices that the office of the commissioner for the for labor which is entrusted to supervise trade union elections will in the future be more vigilant to ensure that such elections are free from any form of malpractices it is common knowledge that we witnessed blatant infiltration of non delegates voting rights towards the end of the voting process from the onset the Central Region Council focused on the vacant seat of the first national chairman on the ground that it was a result for this region according to the traditions of the KNUT. This was until a boardroom decision to front the immediate former Assistant Secretary General to contest for the seat was reached. I believe. This region was meant to rock out this region from not national leadership. It was unscrupulous and completely untenable. All machineries were let loose, including intimidation of, delegated, of, of delegates from other regions to consume, to ensure that our candidate lost in the by-elections. The voting process was marred with a lot of irregularities where non-delegates, including ECD teachers, were allowed to vote. The Association of Kenya Health Professionals, led by Chairman Dr. Mohamed Duba, is raising concern over the move by the Ministry of Health to merge with food and drugs bodies under one regulatory body. Duba says this will compromise the supply chain integrity. The association is calling for thorough consultation between the involved stakeholders to scrutinize the bill before it's tabled in Parliament. All the stakeholders, all the professionals in the health industry refused FDA uh, because uh, we suspected even at that point in time that, that these are the work of the crooks multinationals and cartel so that they can be able to control this trade. As you are aware, uh, severally multinationals have tried very hard to, int to introduce genetic modified uh, uh, foods into this country, which the Minister of Health have been very, very steadfast to ensure that it does not happen. So we are, we are, we are, we are very suspicious, very suspicious indeed, that there are people who want to control this industry. They want to control the supply chain industry in this country. And we are sure, just recently we have seen now what was coming into this country, what was being brought into this country by cartels and uh, crooks. So a single regulatory body, you, you can manipulate easily the board members. And the board members are from diverse, uh, they are not even, 